News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Katie Cook. This weekend we told you about two arrests made in Laurel County Friday morning after a two-year-old child was found playing in dog feces. Today, WYMT's Lacey Roberts talked to the Laurel County Sheriff's Office and has more on the living conditions of that child. All beginning with the welfare complaint at this home. When they did, they noted deplorable living conditions inside. Where law enforcement found a two-year-old child playing in dog feces. Conditions outside, only some confirmation to what was also inside. And what we think was dog urine, there was dog feces all over the residence. Some of the dog feces was as deep as one inch. Deputies immediately arrested the child's father, Joey Ridner, and aunt, Tammy Hammonds, charging them with first degree criminal abuse. The child taken away by social services. And speaking with the arresting officer in this matter, he said it was the worst that he's ever seen. And this Class C felony is punishable by 10 years in prison. They also no noted that the two year old child had dog feces uh, in its toes and was playing with a bottle of bleach. When asked when the child had last been bathed, they could not remember. Deputies saying cases like these are happening too often. We've had uh, several cases here most recently, and it's always the same set of circumstances. A child's not being taken care of properly. And that placing the child in a safe living environment is their first priority. In London, Lacey Roberts, WYMT Mountain News. Both the child's father and aunt are still in the Laurel County Correctional Center waiting on their first appearance in court. Well, conditions are looking pretty good as we head into this evening, just a little bit on the chilly side. But if you look out into Interstate 75 Mount Vernon, you can see pretty good conditions out there. We're seeing dry conditions, just a few clouds in the sky. Now, temperatures definitely still cooling down. We're seeing temperatures in those mid to lower 20s right now, pretty much throughout the mountain region. So temperatures are just going to continue to drop throughout the night, getting very, very cold. And take a look at this. We're anywhere from 20 to 31 degrees colder than we were at this time yesterday. So that's kind of crazy considering we've been seeing these above average temperatures over the past couple of weeks. And now we're seeing temperatures so dramatically cold. And you can these temperatures are going to continue to drop as we go throughout the night. We're going to see some cloud cover at the beginning of the night. It's going to kind of go in and out, but overall we're going to be seeing great conditions. And I'll tell you a little bit more about this winter weather and when we should warm up next coming up later in the newscast. Katie. Thank you, Brooke. Well, we have officially wrapped up our second annual Kentucky Fishing Expo at the Corbin Arena. This weekend was one for the books for both our hobby and competitive fishers in the Tri-County area. One group, Honest Mike Outdoors Fishing Tournaments, came all the way from Texas. One of those over the events are from Kentucky and are bringing a tournament to the area in the upcoming months because they know how good the fishing is firsthand. We wanted to look for something local so that we could actually get out and promote it. The guys that fish Cumberland all the time, you know, live in the Corbin area. So we decided that we were going to come out here and, and try to promote it during the show. And we will have another boating expo coming up this March. So make sure to be looking for details on that on our website, WYMT.com, in the upcoming weeks. And today also in Corbin, the SUNUP initiative held the city's first ever Martin Luther King Jr. celebration and brunch. The brunch at 2nd and Main featured live music, speech readings, and a familiar display. Co-founder of the SUNUP initiative says hosting this brunch was the next step after signing the October 30th proclamation by the mayor. And it shows that Corbin takes diversity seriously. A free brunch was uh, a really exciting way for us to get people together and still celebrate the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The brunch lasted until 2 p.m. Also today, the Laurel County African American Heritage Center passed out flyers for tomorrow's festivities. You can find that list of events on our website, WYMT.com. And you may remember a little dog found in the West found in West Virginia that stole the hearts and attention of so many, even from thousands of miles away. She's been given the name Shelby, and she was starving to death when someone found her last week. But as Taylor Eaton shows us, those taking care of Shelby are hopeful about what is ahead for this survivor. You want to try to get out? 
If only this little dog could talk. We just wish we had uh, to be able have the ability to look back and find out what their history was. She might be able to fill us in on what she has endured. You really wonder. But just by looking at her, you can tell it's been a lot. We actually um, got a message on Facebook Messenger the other day on Friday evening saying that someone who lived at an apartment complex went out to put garbage in the dumpster and they saw a little dog that they believed to be dead next to the dumpster. When rescue crews got to her, this is what she looked like. Alive, but barely hanging on. Severely malnourished and dehydrated. I hate to be crude, but it's like a skeleton with skin stretched over it. Now that she's out of the emergency room, she is recovering here at the Proctorville Animal Clinic. Get your legs under you. Where doctors are trying to find the right balance for her care. Um, to take her from a state where her body's not used to having good nutrition and then just to uh, you know, bring it back suddenly would, could be detrimental. You know, it could induce some digestive problems. And the shelter that helped rescue her is facing a challenge of their own. We've had people from far away. Um, I received a PayPal donation this morning from South Carolina and another one from France. We just need to give this some time and see how it plays out. And then we'll, I may have to call in volunteers to help <laughs> check the applications if we continue to get as many. So while she can't tell us the story of her past, I have hope now. Those involved with her care now are hopeful her recovery is just the start to what will be a much better story for her future. And we do have an update on Shelby. Her caregivers say she is now able to stand up on her own and is showing major progress. The shelter says she the shelter she is staying at says she is feeling better and getting stronger every day. And a group of people in Breathitt County came up with a creative solution to a serious problem. A wooden doghouse is placed outside of Tiki Treasures as a pet food blessing box. Travis Combs built the box and he says it is an answer to a problem he's seen throughout the community. Anybody is, at any time can come by. The, the box is always open. You just drop off any food you can for dogs, cats, any kind of pet, any kind of pet. Um, product really, pee pads, snacks, anything like that. Now the box is not only for donations, Combs says it's also for people to take what they need from it. We will have more on this blessing box coming up at 11 and we'll have more Mountain News Weekend Edition when we come back.